Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got the Hedgehog today. This is a QSP classic style slip joint knife. Comes four different ways. Two versions with micarta handles, two with carbon fiber and color inlay. They're going to cost a little bit more with the carbon fiber. 14C 28 end stainless steel blade and you know a classic back spring half stop slip joint knife. I've had mine, this is a sample, a prototype that I got at Blade Show in Atlanta in uh, June of 2022. And I've been carrying this thing so much lately. It started off sort of like, and uh, the retail version is a blue denim. Uh, it was a really dark blue denim, but you know, the oils in my skin have now turned it into basically a black or a dark, dark gray uh, micarta. But, uh, it's a nice knife. I'm very happy with this thing. And I want to tell you all about it. So come on down. Let's go to the tabletop and check out this knife. It's not a very big knife. It's definitely a sub three inch knife. You know, like here's the Ontario Rat 1. You know, and it's definitely, it's a small knife. It's not big at all. Now, for the last, uh, I don't know, three, four, five months, I've been trying really hard to make my videos as professional as possible, doing loads of editing, uh, doing what they call J cuts, you know, to cut out all the dead airspace. So it's like talking all the way through the way people are telling YouTubers to make videos nowadays. But my views aren't really changing. They're not going up, they're not going down. My views stay pretty much the way they have been for the last few years. So, I'm starting in this video again. I'm not going to do extensive editing. You might have seen one of my videos in the past or two that, you know, I said I was doing that, but now I'm just verbally telling you guys, I'm not going to cut out all the ums and the ahs and all the, you know, dead airtime when I'm thinking or something. I'll cut out a bunch of that. I'll cut out some of that, but, you know, not all of it. Let's take a look at this knife. What do we got here? We've got a micarta here that's got these sort of scallops cut out on it all across the spine and then again all across the belly. Loads of texture, behaves a lot like jimping to give extra grip. The micarta itself already has a pretty good grip and the colors look great. Uh, but this one, I think, you know, being a sample, a prototype, it's not the same colors as the ones that are out there. And you see all the metal back here, it's a back spring. You see, when you go to open it, that spring gets pushed up. And then on the half stop, that spring is now smooth again. And pull it further, and now it's all the way open. And it's got a strong back spring. You can whack it on the back, and it wants to stay open. So, you know, quite nice. Big, strong back spring. The metal's sanded down together really, really well. It almost looks like it's one piece of steel. It the handle's got rounded edges everywhere. Uh, the belly, the micarta's rounded too. You know, good comfortable grip. My hands are just barely in the extra large range and I get a full four finger grip on this thing. So that's nice. How about the blade? Like I said, it's 14C28N. It's a fairly straight spine. And then we've got this sort of recurve clip point. Basically, most people are going to call this a sheep's foot blade. And then we've got a fairly straight edge. It's not perfectly straight. There is a tiny bit of a belly on this. It's like they ground away a little bit more at the tip and at the heel. You know, it's very, very subtle. Now, this guy's a flat grind. This is a full flat grind, but the retail versions, it says on the QSP website that they are hollow grind. I would have loved for my sample to be hollow grind. I prefer hollow grind. It means that the edge is going to stay thin and really thin for many more sharpenings. Uh, this is already almost up to the thickness that I want it to stop at. I don't, what I'm saying is it's not super thin. It's not too thick, but it's not super thin. And uh, it cuts quite well. You know, the grind angles, yeah, they're not great, but it cuts pretty well. Uh, this was a sample, not so much for testing how it cuts. It's a sample that was created, a prototype that was created to see how it works, you know, how well, you know, it flows, the design, basically. Uh, they know what steel they're using. They know, you know, how, how a sharp knife cuts. So 
I don't think that they tried super hard to sharpen this perfectly. So that's not really the point of how well this thing works. It's the shape of it. It's the design. And it's an awesome little pocket knife. I love this tip for package opening. Uh, Urban EDC, uh, regular EDC, uh, cowboy EDC even. This is a style knife that comes in very, very handy. It does everything except for puncturing. And uh, it does it quite well. I really like it. We've got these fullers on both sides. They've got sort of a bead blast finish on the inside of them. And yeah, my skin's very oily, so I leave fingerprints everywhere like crazy. I would have preferred probably a stonewash finish, but it looks nice. It really looks nice. Sharpener's trial, it's big enough, so I like that. It comes out past the end of the plunge. That's just ideal. The badging's pretty small. You've got a small QSP up here in the Ricasso. And the placement and the size and everything's good. 14C28 in up here. And then there it says sample. I don't know if the finished version has nothing there or whatever. But uh, hey, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then you've got your classic construction. I will take the handle scales off to show you. But I'm not going to take it fully apart. They say that there are copper washers in here. I'm assuming they mean phosphor bronze. But uh, you know maybe it is copper. In either case... You know, it works really well. The action's good. There's no binding and uh, holds quite well. I quite like it. So let's take it apart. So this is a section I'm inserting now. This is after I've sharpened it and uh, it's got a beautiful edge on it now. I decided on 17 and a half degrees per side and it sharpened up very, very well. It's just it's scary sharp. <laughs> I, I literally am scared to put my fingers on the edge. But yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, now I've got some of that residue on my thumb. I didn't wash it all off from sharpening. But it's 14C28N. They say it's at Rockwell 60, plus or minus a tiny bit. I think they're spot on. I, it, I've got a pretty good feel when I'm sharpening knives on what the hardness is. And yeah, that's great. One thing I didn't show you before, I forgot to show you the balance point. It's right there, right behind these lines in the handle a bit. I would prefer if it was up a bit more, but hey, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm super happy with this. Hopefully you can clearly see that I've been carrying it by how dirty it is in there. Like I've just made it dirty. So yeah, if you've not seen a slip joint knife open before, it's a lot like a lockback knife, except for, you know, there's no notch here for it to lock in. This spring back here pushes down on the metal here, which basically pushes up on the tip and it holds it in place. And there's a half stop, basically a square bottom. They, they can use different shapes. And as you can see, you know, moving it over that corner creates pressure and it would prefer to be here or here. Now, the trick with these is this back spring strong. If you take it completely apart, chances are you might not put it back together again unless you are very skilled with working with slip joint knives. So I'm not going to take it apart any further than this. Uh, let's point out a few things. There's that stop pin. That stop pin touches the steel right here. So when it goes to close, actually right there in the, it stops right there in that sharpener's toil and that stops the cutting edge from getting damaged. So really smart design, really simple construction. And uh, I'm going to clean it up and put it back together again. I've got it back together. I'm glad this is a T8 here. I'm not too fond of T6 button screws. And I've said that many, many times on this channel. But it's not terrible right here. I also must add that QSP uses good quality screws. It's very, very rare that their T6 screws strip out. Because they don't use like the super soft super. They do not use super soft steel. They use, you know, good steel. So while I don't prefer T6, at least theirs are pretty good. Uh, one batch I didn't tell you about, this is their QSP uh, triangle logo. So that refers to them as well. It's quite nice. Uh, lanyard hole at the back and they didn't chamfer it or anything. That's okay. It's big enough for 550 paracord. That's good. There's no pocket clip anywhere. It's more of a classic style. You either just drop it in your pocket or put it in a leather sleeve or slip, whatever you want to call it, and use it that way. 
I'm very happy with all those things. Let's talk about all the specs. The weight of this knife is 85 ounces. That's three 85 ounces. 85 grams, that's three ounces. And not bad. Uh, on the QSP site, they're saying it's just a tiny bit under that, but uh, that's the weight I got on my scale. The factory sharpness on mine was 190 best, a little bit worse than average. The cutting edge length is 67.3 millimeters, 2.65 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 73.4 millimeters, 2.89 inches. So well under the three inch laws, so you don't have any worries there. And it's a slip joint, so it's pretty much legal everywhere in the world. Not 100% sure of that, but almost anywhere in the world this thing's legal. The thickness of the blade, 2.94 millimeters, that's 0.1155 of an inch, so a little bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, it's actually wider here than it is at the heel, so that is 20.1 millimeters, 0.79 inches. How thin is it behind the grind? Well, it's 0.49 millimeters, 19 thousandths. Now, 20 thousandths is my top that I prefer. So, it's close. Grind angles. Oh, I don't have the grind angles on the sheet. So, look on the screen. This side has got this grind angle, starting from heel to tip in, in that order in there. This side has got this grind angle, starting from tip to heel. So, it's in the order of left to right of what you see. And... Uh, yeah, so it's okay. I can sharpen this no problem at all. And maybe I'll even do that before the end of the video and let you visually see the difference on how that looks. Measurements continuing the handle, 95.7 millimeters, 3.77 inches long. The grip area, it's about 8.6 centimeters or 3.4 inches. That's rounding a little bit because I'm not sure with a round edge here and a round edge here exactly where to measure it to. The thickness of the handle, though, it is radiused around, so it's thickest right down the middle, and that is 13.1 millimeters, 0.5167 inch, but at the edges here, it's less, so that's not bad. The handle depth, that's this measurement, it's widest right back here, 22.5 millimeters, 0.8867 inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is up here, of course, 34.5 millimeters, 1.36 inches. And when the knife is open, you can see the exact full length, 170 millimeters, 6.69 inches. The price of this knife, what is that? Well, White Mountain Knives has got it for the same price that most people have it, $57.85 for the Micarta version. You take off 10% with coupon code CCE, and that makes it $52.06 for this knife. If you want the fancy carbon fiber with the color in, you know, the gold or red, it's a bit more, $84.95. Take off the 10%, $76.46. Uh, for the micarta version it equals about 70 canadian dollars if you are in canada slip joints like this have no problems crossing the border into canada well they might have a little bit of problem but they're 100 percent legal you should be ha able to get this knife i have noticed though cbsa in the last two months last month and a half or something they are charging duty on every single thing that they can and of course, so you gotta pay extra tax on it, but it should be 100% safe for you to order a slip joint knife and get it imported into Canada. So don't let that stop you. If uh, if I find a Canadian store that's got these, you know, I'll leave a link down below, but I don't know of any Canadian store that has these at the moment, because uh, they've just been released in this last few days or so. So that's the price. The price, yeah, I think it's worth it. I really do. What's my summary? What are my thoughts on this thing? Do I like it? Do I not like it? I like it. I like it an awful lot. Like I said, I've been carrying this thing whenever I don't have another knife that I need to be carrying to review, or usually when I have that knife, I've got this guy as a secondary knife in my pocket. I usually carry two knives at a time, both of which, you know, I'm researching, you know, how they feel, how they carry, you know, when I need to cut something, you know, how convenient they are and stuff. But for the most part, I've been carrying this knife along with other knives, and it's because I'm a big fan. I've, I've always liked classic slip joint knives. They're very safe once you've learned how to be safe with a knife. Uh, 
you know, here's the hamster. It's, you know, a flipper knife. It's a locking knife. This is just as risky as this is. You just have to learn how to handle it properly. A lot of people are scared of slip joint knives, but it they're only scary if you don't use them properly. If you use a knife safely, by the way, this is the Hamster by QSP S35VN, also a great gift at Christmas time. Titanium, and you know, it's a little bit more pricey than this, but yeah, that's nice. But I was talking about slip joint safety you know, you just don't let them close on you. And this thing's got such a strong half stop. Yeah, maybe if, you know, something hits it and it comes up, you might get a tiny little nick on the side of your finger. But, you know, it's not going to close all the way on you very easily at all. You know, that spring is strong. Just stay away from that edge. You know? And when you're cutting stuff, don't push on the spine. You know, you push on the blade all the time when you're cutting. When you've got a locking knife, you should follow those exact same rules because locks can fail, locks can break. And if you have been using knives terribly and allowing yourself to put pressure on the spine of knives while you're using them, you're asking for a failure and you're asking to get cut. Now, I, it's just the way it is. So learn how to use knives always having pressure on the edge and not on the spine and you'll always be safe. That's not 100% guaranteed, but I'm talking about during normal use. I'm not talking about, you know, knives that end up opening a little bit in your pocket and you slip your hand in and stuff like that. That's a mechanical issue you've got to deal with, but uh, this knife is awesome. I'm very happy I've got one. I'm probably going to buy some more. I hope they uh, come out with, you know, different versions, but I really want to experience the hollow grind version. So I really think I'll be buying one for myself as well. So the Hedgehog by QSP, I think is a winner, winner, chicken dinner, turkey dinner, winner, winner, turkey dinner. It's the season. Like I said, these make great gifts for yourself or for somebody else. Thank you to my supporters. You guys are stunning. I appreciate your help every single month. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.